focusing in, kind of really honing in to the specific things that can help us cope is, you know, the hardiness, the skill of, you know, being able to see change and novelty as an opportunity to grow. You know, not entertaining the the kind of excessive negativity or catastrophizing. It's fine to have a destination, but if you're not paying attention to how you're supposed to get there, then yeah, you're just going for a nice little casual drive. (laughs) Bringing your attention to really focus on something in the present moment. Hi everybody and welcome to another Feel Good Friday. Um, This week I'm joined by business psychologist from Kinch Lions, uh, Julie O'Sullivan. So Julie, thank you very much for giving me your, giving us your time today. Thank you so much for inviting me. The pleasure's all mine. (laughs) Thank you. Um, Today we're going to talk about we're going to talk about hardiness. You know, you think about hardiness. I think of going to the gym, and building those building those <laughs> muscles. Um, and I've done a bit of work in the past with Julie around hardiness, and I think it's very relevant to to the world that we're living in uh, at the at the moment. So I suppose Julie, if we start the interview, and I say like, what is what is hardiness? Yeah, absolutely. And like you said, very, very relevant at the moment. So it's hardiness is it's basically a a set of psychological characteristics or qualities that characterize people who can continue to perform well under pressure. And it is a component of what is probably more familiar to most people, which is resilience. Um, so resilience is, you know, kind of a more broad, like ability to recover from adversity or stressful situations. But I suppose resilience is, as I said, quite broad. It can be made up of a lot of different things, some of, some of which are within our control and some aren't, you know, like things like our personality, how we were brought up, our financial situation, our support system, all of those really tie into how well we can cope with stress and challenges. Um, but focusing in kind of really honing in to the specific things that can help us cope is you know the hardiness which is made up of these three pillars they're the the three c's so challenge control and commitment um so as i said they do you know help us cope with um difficult situations adversity stress and it's a way for us to really kind of keep going through these difficult times and i mean this has always been relevant in our world but right now it is just you know really being put into the test and um, so yeah absolutely so I suppose what we could do is just go through what each of those three C's look like or what they mean um I can take think of other kind of yeah tips as well of how to how to develop them and everything like that so as I said challenge control and commitment um these are all skills basically that can be developed so that's why I quite like focusing on them because you know it's not it's it's all within our control um so the first one there is <clears throat> challenge which is basically the skill of you know being able to see change and novelty as an opportunity to grow um so it's it's similar to if you've ever come across a, a growth mindset which is you know being able to Like if someone has a growth mindset, they see change or failure as, okay, what can I learn from this rather than, oh, that's a threat to my intelligence or that's the limit of my abilities. Um, So people who have this challenge mindset, they're able to mindfully respond to challenges rather than just, you know, react with defensiveness. Um, So people who have this as well, they're, you know, not expecting life to just be easy. They're willing to you know, face those challenges head on and they know that, okay, well, things will work out in the end because I'm going to learn something from it or I'll, I'll gain something. <clears throat> um, if someone was a bit lower in this, again, like I said, you know, if they, if they experience failure, you might see that as that's the limit to my abilities. Or when they're faced with change and uncertainty, they might be more likely to go, okay, that's, you know, something to be avoided, something to run from. Um, at the moment, you know, we can't really run from the amount of change that's going on and so it's obviously really um helpful to have this skill Um, if you're trying to develop it it's you know often a case of trying to adapt how you see the situation or maybe change your attitude towards things so for example if you see yeah like you know you're faced with big change or some kind of failure things don't go your way it's reminding yourself, okay, what can I learn from this? Um, what is 
the, the benefit or the development that I've got from this. And reminding yourself that, you know, if, if we want to develop skills, that requires us to do something we've never done before. If we want to innovate or be creative, we have to risk failure because it's trying something new. Uh, so reminding ourselves of that, embracing change and challenge, um, but also at the same time, you know, being realistic about the, the challenges that you can take on. Um, so I suppose it's that, that balancing act of being willing to take on challenges, being willing to, to push ourselves outside of our comfort zone, but being realistic as well about it. Um, if there are uh, leaders as well who are trying to cultivate this within their team, I would say as well to, to model that, you know, model fun in novelty, you know, and model that you see a value in change or new experiences for learning. Um, if you're trying to limit this and try to not develop it in people, then you can create, you know, you can blame people when things go wrong or you can, you know, say, for example, require rules and permissions for absolutely everything you do. Um, those are probably likely to make people feel, OK, I'm not I'm not willing to take on new challenges or try new things. Um, so. If you're trying to avoid that as a leader, I would say, you know, not focusing all your energy on, OK, something went wrong. Who's to blame? It's more of, OK, something went wrong. What can we learn from that? Um, so that's pretty much the, um, the, the challenge aspect of it. Um, I suppose, again, you know, you can be high or low in that skill. If you're a bit lower, as I said, you probably are a bit resistant to change. But if you are really, really high in that, it can also be a problem as in, you know, you might want to be mindful of not just taking unnecessary risks just for the sake of experiencing change. Um, so that is the, um, the challenge aspect there. Then the second one is control. So that one is all about having a sense of, you know, self-efficacy, a sense of a belief that whatever happens in your life that you can influence your outcomes. Um, again, really relevant to the situation that's going on at the moment because there's so much that feels out of our control right now. Um, and we can, you know, we can get sucked into the, you know, the kind of thinking of all these different things that we can't actually control. You know, oh, when will this be over? When will we be back to work? Uh, you know, oh, people are stockpiling and buying up the shops. I don't know what to, you know, focusing on that. I can't control what other people are doing. I can't control how this will play out. So if I'm spending my time and energy on that, I'm just going to get quite drained by it. Um, so as people who have this control skill, they're able to, you know, make choices about their own life and accept responsibility for it. Um, they are, you know, believing that, yeah, they can, they can influence what's going on. And so I suppose that can reduce fear about an uncertain future. Because if you have that belief that, okay, well, whatever happens, I'll find a way to, to manage it, um, that's going to mean you're much more likely to be able to cope with it when, you know, the, the unexpected happens. Um, but when people are lower in that skill, you know, they're, you know, more, more fearful about an uncertain future because they go, okay, what's going to happen to me? And um, so it's more so that powerlessness or maybe feeling or sounding like a victim and kind of feeling, oh, well, there's nothing I can do. Um, so you can sometimes give in to that sort of powerlessness and go, OK, I have no choice in this matter. Um, but that is actually probably going to, again, drain your energy and not be helpful in terms of coping with these these challenges. Um, I actually, I suppose there's a analogy that I like to use that kind of sums this up. You know, if you are swimming in the sea and you get caught in a rip current, um, the advice of what you're not supposed to do is just try and swim against the rip current straight towards the shore because you know you're not going to be able you're not going to be more powerful than the power of the sea um so it's you know you're just going to tire yourself out and get nowhere um but it also doesn't mean you know you float off to sea and just accept that you know you're just going to go off and live on a desert island somewhere you don't just let it take you where it takes you but what you're actually supposed to do if you're caught in a rip current is swim parallel to the shore so I suppose that really just illustrates that, you know, in life, we will be faced with things that are out of our control, as in, you know, something that is much more powerful than us. Example, what's going on right now in the world? You know, we can't control exactly how this disease spreads, um, for example. But again, that doesn't mean just give up. 
but it means, okay, well, let's focus on what is within my control. Like I can, okay, I have to work from home. Okay, but that's fine. I can figure out new ways of managing my work and figuring out new ways to stay entertained at home when I can't go outside. You know, focusing on <clears throat> what can we influence. Um, and a way of reminding ourselves of that is, again, how do we talk about a situation? If we hear ourselves saying things like, oh, there's nothing I can do. You know, it's totally out of my control. I have no choice. Again, you're giving away that power. Um, so you're kind of giving away, you know, feeling more, more helpless as a result. Um, so instead of that, you could just say, for example, you know, OK, I don't like my options here, but I'm choosing to do something. So, you know, if you think of that in work, like, say, if you have a particular deadline coming up, at the moment and you're saying oh god like I have to work late there's no choice I have to just spend hours on this I'm going to be here all night okay hang on let's try and you know rephrase that so you could instead say all right so well I don't actually I'm not forced to stay late and work what are my options well I could miss my deadline okay I don't what are the implications of that no I don't really like that I'm not going to choose that I could hand in something that's not great. I can, you know, put my name for something that I'm not proud of. Okay. I don't want to do that either. Okay. So what I'm choosing to do is <clears throat> I'll spend a certain amount of time, you know, I'll, I'll finish it this time in the evening, but I'll have it done by then. And I'm really looking forward to having it done then, you know, I'm going to put, I'll give it my all and give the best, you know, quality work that I can. And that again, just really changes the, you know, your approach to it, your energy that you're getting from it. It's, <clears throat> you know, really just emphasizing that, no, this is within my control. I want to do this. That's going to keep me going. Um, and again, think about that if you're a leader. It, how are you communicating to others the work that you want them to do? Is it, you have to get this done by Friday? Or is it, okay, I think you're, you know, you have the most skills and capabilities to do this. I think you're the best person for this job. Do you think that's within your capabilities to, to get that done by Friday? you know, the difference in how that person will feel, you know, rather than, oh God, I have to get it done. The pressure's on. Right? Okay, well, hang on. Do I have the capabilities? Yeah, I do. I have the resources. I have enough time. Yeah. All right. I can do this. And you're going into it with a much, you know, much more positive attitude. So again, re-emphasizing that feeling of this is within my control. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So in terms of, again, other tips to develop that control aspect, you know, you can be you can like sometimes if there's a massive task, it can feel very overwhelming. Just breaking it down, you know, into those manageable chunks and going, okay, I've completed this small manageable chunk. That's a start. Okay, reward myself even for that start, and then yeah, keep chipping away at it. Um, again, as well, at the moment, I think this is especially um, relevant. Is you know not entertaining the, the kind of excessive negativity or catastrophizing, and that's just you know in our day-to-day -day lives or kind of in general, it could be coming from our own internal monologue or it could be coming from other people or the news, you know, again, focusing on, right, I'm going to switch off from that or, okay, I'm going to notice how my, my internal voice in my head is going really towards the negative. Let's try and bring it back. Let's, you know, look at the positives just, just to give a balanced perspective. Um, and then, yeah, as I said, if you're a leader and you're trying to enhance this within your team, it's, you know, providing tasks that are within people's capabilities. And especially now, if you're managing virtual teams and kind of remote working, you know, like if you're all in an office together, sometimes you can tell, OK, that person's under pressure. They've got a lot on their plate right now that you can see they're they're stressed. I shouldn't go over and dump something else on them. Um, but it's a lot harder now that we have those these kind of virtual teams that we might not have had before. So really consciously going, is this something that you can get done this week or will I ask someone else or, you know, really just, just consciously communicating is that, you know, asking, is that within your control? Um, so that is the, the second aspect of the three C's. Um, again, I mentioned in the last one, you know, it's great to have a high, well-developed skill in this, but if this was, you know, a really, really strong strength, it might say, okay, be cautious about not trying to control everything. You know, not trying to go, hey, I will only try something if I know I can control all of the outcomes, because again, that might hold you back from trying new things. So then the third one is uh, commitment, which is basically being able to be engaged and 
seeing life, seeing different parts of your life as meaningful and interesting. So people who have a strong sense of this, they are striving to reach their full potential. You know, they're finding ways to make their life more interesting and meaningful. And um, again, bringing it back to this current situation, that can be difficult because you might say, well, I can't see my friends and family. I can't go to the gym. I can't, you know, meet, you know, meet up with my walking group or whatever else that gave you kind of a sense of purpose or meaning. Um, so it can just be a case of maybe readjusting and making sure, OK, well, what can I do instead to make my life more more meaningful? Um, if someone is lower in this skill, they're probably more likely to just sort of go with the flow and go wherever life t- takes them. Um, rather than, you know, having a very clear purpose uh, or a meaning in life, a kind of personal mission statement, um, if they have that, that's more likely to really keep them going through difficult times. Um, Victor Frankl, who's a, you know, he was someone who I think actually was in, mentioned in the last um Feel Good Friday webinar that you did. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and actually a lot of the stuff that he was mentioning does really tie into this, but it kind of bears repeating. You know what I mean? Like it's if it comes up again and again, that's because it works. You know, there's so much kind of research out there. And even, you know, um, yeah. So again, he would Victor Frankel would have said, you know, we detect our meaning in life rather than invent it you know so again bearing in mind that it is a gradual process of figuring that out and constantly you know checking in and readjusting am I still living my purpose am I still you know on track for where I want to be Um, because I think often people do go okay well when I retire I'll do this or oh if I won the lotto I would do that Um, and it's all the kind of in the future I'll do this but why not now you know it's really just a case of your your actions today will have that impact on your retirement or you know what's happening in the future and a good I suppose exercise to do is have a think about you know if it was my retirement party and I had a few you know four or five really close friends or close people that were really important in my career and I was asking them how have I impacted you what would I like to hear them say you know so really visualizing that like if they're saying okay you know I want to hear them say that I'm a hardworking person who, you know, always tried my best and was always there to support them. And, you know, whatever that is, whatever you want to hear them say, it's just about reminding yourself to do that each day. You know, so it's not about waiting until you get to that that end goal. Um, And this uh, this whole idea of commitment and purpose, it's kind of like, you know, if you've ever, um, you know, if you have like a sat nav in your car. And you put in, you know, the where you want to go. You pop in your, you know, destination. Okay, that's where I want to end up. Um, but I've definitely done it myself. I'm sure you might have as well. But you kind of sometimes switch on to autopilot. You know, if you're driving around in a familiar area, you might not be actually looking at the GPS. And then you might go, oh, I actually missed a turn a few minutes back. And that's, again, just kind of an illustration of it's fine to have a destination. But if you're not paying attention to how you're supposed to get there, then yeah, you're just going for a nice little casual drive. <laughs> you know, you're not actually getting there with with an intention. So it's really about yeah, being intentional about finding your your purpose and your drive. So I think that it's really important when you're trying to develop this to you know take a minute out and actually reflect: Is this what I want to be doing? Is this you know giving me meaning? Is this true to my values? Is it aligned with all that? Um, you know, taking time out because again we can get caught up in that busyness of this is what I have to do every day. But yeah, actually taking a minute to go, well, hang on, is it what I actually really want to be doing? And um, when you figure out what, what's most important to you, then commit to that, you know, and share that commitment with others. Um, I think as well, you know, really making time for what's most important because often we say, oh, well, you know, if I had more time, I would do this. Well, just make time, you know, obviously easier said than done for some, some things, but yeah, make time. Like if you were, you know, really busy in work, but your dishwasher just suddenly broke down and the kitchen has flooded, you wouldn't go, oh, I'm actually really busy. It would work right now. So I'll just leave that for tomorrow. You know, you, you find the time, you make time for those urgent priorities. So it's just about making the things that are most important in your life, making those an urgent priority and you'll find the time for them. Um, so yeah and then as I said yeah you're figuring out you know what's most important how do I get there 
Um, when it comes to, you know, if you're a leader and you're trying to foster this in your team, it'd be a case of, you know, support and individual development. Like if they express an interest, try and nurture that if you can. You know, if they're kind of going, oh, I'd love to do this training rather than jumping to, oh, we don't have the budget or we don't have the time, you know, just try and even think outside the box. Is there a way that you can support that, their individual individual development? Um, also, you know, if they accomplish something to really recognize and praise that, again, it might kind of encourage that. I'm going, okay, that's, that, that was a, a useful thing that I did. You know, that's been recognized. Brilliant. I'll do it again. Um, and also then, you know, if you were trying to say, for example, if you're trying to diminish it as a leader, if you weren't trying to have people committed, you could just, you know, keep your own purpose or mission to yourself and not communicate it with other people. Um, it's difficult for people to stay committed to something if they don't know where they're going. You know, if they don't know what the end goal is, you might be really excited and passionate about something, but you have, if you haven't fully com- communicated that to others, then yeah, they're, they're less likely to be as committed and engaged as you were. Um, in terms of the, uh, the commitment, just if, you know, again, being high on that is great as a, as a skill, but if you are too high in it, you could be, you know, so immersed in your activities that you lose sight of the bigger picture. Um, so that would be something that you can kind of keep in mind if you're high in any of those skills. And with all of those, you know, they work best um, as, you know, it's like it's like a bar stool. There's three of them. If you take one away, not as sturdy. You know, it, they work best when they're in balance with each other. So again, if you're really high in control, but really low in challenge, then you might be, you know, less likely to take on new things because you're trying to control absolutely everything. So, you know, they can kind of work against each other. Um, so that is pretty much hardiness in a nutshell, the three C's. Um, Great. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So, like, a very positive message there. Like, is it, like you get in a uh, challenge, commitment, control, but to see that we can't, the control that we actually, like, we've, we've got to control ourselves. Yeah. Uh, and we, we all have the power. Um, and I suppose that sometimes things happen. And we take the knock, but I suppose again, it's that bounceability, it's that bouncing, bouncing back piece. Um, Absolutely, yeah. And you know, and, 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 yeah. We're, and we're born to bounce back. You know, we're we're we're, we're born to bounce back. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. There's when I was looking at when I, when I was when I was getting ready for your interview, there was a quote: "Experience is a hard teacher because it gives us the tests first and the lessons afterwards." You know, yeah. Billy that wrote Billy Byrne that wrote. Um, an article there just in hindsight because there's going oh, to be yeah. <laughs> absolutely yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> this is what we should have been doing and yeah all yeah that. yeah so uh, so at the moment so so we've we've been given we're, we're, we're we've been given a test at the moment um, and I suppose for me as a leader or for my customers as business owners what kind of tips would you give me to to build my hardiness when I when we finish this interview today that I can go away with yeah, so I suppose it's get and just to kind of reiterate that often it is about changing how you view a situation, first of all. You know, if you change the viewing, you can change the doing, basically. You know, changing that initial appraisal, again, it might be panic initially, that's okay. But if we stay in that state of panic or that state of fear or I'm out of control or I can't take this on, then yeah, we're not going to get very far. So it might just take a case of, okay, well, let's try and, you know, what are the the opportunities from this? What are the ways to grow? What are the things that I can influence? Or what is the the meaning that I can get from this? So, yeah, I think first step is probably just changing how you view a situation. Um, I would say as well, yeah, the, the language that you use to describe what's happening to you right now, do tune into that, you know, and really listen to what, um, yeah, how are you describing it? And again, like I said, if you're using that kind of language of I'm powerless right now, I have, you know, there's no hope, there is no, you know, I can't, I can't uh, deal with this. Um, just again, being really mindful of that and not allowing yourself to go into that really excessive negativity. Um, but yeah, like you said, the the kind of the hindsight, you know, that we are dealing with this new challenge um, and I suppose, yeah, it's, it's seen that that is such a huge opportunity to, to grow and develop ourselves. And then finally, I think a big 
point is intention. You know, so I'm like, I'm really grateful because my role kind of requires me to know about resilience and know how to manage change or how to do virtual teams, all that. You know, I have that information, but that's not to say that I use it 100% of the time, even though I should. You know, I don't. And I've noticed that about myself is that, especially at the very start um, of this whole situation, I was, you know, and kind of to a sense still am, I, you know, I was like, I'm not switching off from work or I'm not maybe communicating as much or as well as I should. Uh, I'm, you know, allowing myself to get sucked into the negativity, constantly checking the news, everything like that. And yeah, so it's, it's, you might know these things. And I mean, what I'm talking about here, it's not rocket science. Like we kind of know that this is how we can cope better. A lot of us know these things, but it's just about intention and actually being mindful about what we're actually doing. Um, And when I say mindfulness as well, like sometimes people kind of think, mindfulness you know oh I'm not going to sit and do a bit of meditation and you know go off and sit on the top of a mountain and you know meditate but actually mindful just is mindful is like doing something like intentionally you know bringing your attitude or in, bringing your attention to really focus on something in the present moment you know it's not about not necessarily about having to focus on your breathing or anything like that it can just be like what am I actually doing and why you know um so like I said, you know, we often have, you know, we know how to deal with stress or we know these these coping strategies, um, but actually putting it into practice, there can sometimes be that gap between what we know and what we actually do. Um, so I think that really comes from intention. Yeah. Um, Great. So, so lo- lovely information, um, Julie. So uh, I re- just really, really appreciate your time uh, today. Yeah. Um, I, and I, I, again, as I just emphasize, there's a very positive message there that you, everything that we can do. Um, and, and I suppose the other piece is, so everything that we can do, even though we're going through this pandemic now, um, tools that we can carry through right through our life, you know? Absolutely, yeah. And like we've been, you know, working on this kind of thing since, you know, long before this whole pandemic has happened. Um, but yeah, like you mentioned, it is quite a, a positive message. And this whole side of psychology, like resilience and well-being and meaning, it comes from positive psychology. And I suppose, what, well, just to explain for, for anyone who doesn't know and explain what it's not, you know, positive psychology is not just, oh, just think positively. You know, um, that can be quite annoying when you're, you know, dealing with a lot of stress or something. Oh, it'll be fine. It'll work out. Just think positive. And um, so it's not that. And it's also not, you know, Pop psychology, which would just be, you know, the kind of airy fairy sort of not based on a lot of science, just kind of a fad that comes in that people, you know, jump on and jump on a trend. Um, but no, positive psychology is really that science behind high performance, you know, and that ties in so much with, you know, what I do in business psychology, but also say like sports psychology, you know, it's OK, you have the skills, but how do we get even further? How do we make sure our team is really cohesive? How do we you know, perform at our absolute optimal level, cope with the pressures of, you know, when we're under, under, you know, under scrutiny? How do we continue to perform? And um, so, so like positive psychology, it, it's kind of been a, a bit of a change from, say, traditional psychology, which, you know, in the past, it would have been very focused on what's wrong with you. You know, what are the illnesses or problems that you're dealing with okay let's try and get you from bad to normal whatever that means but you know that kind of thing it's kind of taking it from okay focusing on what's wrong with you but then positive psychology sort of a shift in how we viewed it was well what about you know people who are doing good how do we get to great um you know and again like all of these you might have I think everyone has some level of hardiness or resilience or they have some ways of coping with these kind of um you know difficult situations but it's just a case of really being able to enhance it and focus on what's working well what are the strengths that I can leverage in order to be really high performing and really thrive rather than just survive you know I think when this initially hit everyone was like okay survival mode um but now it's more a case of how do I actually thrive and work really well in this you know new normal as people keep saying um but yeah exactly so I think it is it's more just focusing on rather than what are the problems it's you know because problem talk will really create problem they'll create more problems but then that solution talk focusing on what strengths I have that can 
create the solutions. Great. Uh, Julie, well, thanks for your time. Uh, really, really appreciate it. So loads of lessons there for me, for my customers, for our team. Um, so, yeah, so thank you. Thank you, Julie. And, uh, yeah, thanks so much for having me. <laughs> we'll, we'll catch up soon. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Julie. Thank you.